Welcome to Modern Lifekeeping, where we talk about ways to heal our life. I'm your host, Lori Christine. This week, in honor of it being the third anniversary of Kira's death, I thought that I would share with everybody some of the things that uh, I learned over the past three years um, since since Kira died, having to process the you know processing the death of our child certainly isn't an easy time. But these are the things that that I've learned. And we'll see if any of them resonate with any of you. The first things I learned was that forgiveness is a process, and that that process really begins with me. So it's not something that. I can necessarily decide to do and overnight all of a sudden, oh, you know, I've, I've magically forgiven people. Um, it hasn't worked that way. Um, and it really, I got the most momentum when I forgave myself and I had to forgive myself for any number of things, um, you know, having to do with parenting or anything really. You could, you could have to forgive yourself for staying in a relationship too long for not following your intuition, for having a job that doesn't align with your soul. There's any number of things that we might want to forgive ourselves for that maybe we're, you know, holding a score against ourselves, or, you know, beating ourselves up with it, or it's just bringing us down. So learning how to forgive ourselves for anything that we perceive as less than ideal is one of the most important things I learned how to do in the past three years. I also learned that I am the only one responsible for assigning meaning to my life experiences. So what that means is that I, you know, I get to say what something means to me. I don't have to listen to what other people think it should mean or tell me that it means or want it to mean. I get to say what value each experience has. And what that allows me is to have the power to have expansive experiences instead of limiting experiences. So when I tell people that uh, my daughter's death, that Kira dying actually brought me blessings, you know, they're, they're a little horrified. But um, my saying that is it gives the experience expansive meaning. So it allows me to feel better about it. Um, Does it mean I wish it didn't happen? Of of course I wish it didn't happen, but I can't change the fact that it happened. So if that's the case, which that is reality, I'd much rather choose uh, thoughts, uh, thoughts that have higher value, right? I'd rather place higher value meaning, higher valued meaning onto my experiences because that's, that's expansive and that helps to heal me. So, and that leads me to learning that I can heal myself from trauma. So taking some of these steps for giving myself and understanding that I am the person that's saying what my experiences are, uh, helps me to heal myself from trauma. And you can do the same thing. We all have the power to heal ourselves. Uh, we have that within ourselves. It's, part of our faculties. It's part of our extra sensory perception. It's just part of how we function. It's just that we've forgotten. We've been conditioned to think that we need medication. We need counseling. We need this. We need that. We need something outside of ourselves to heal ourselves inside when, you know, you can't heal our insides with something outside. It's, it, we have to heal our insides with what's inside. And that's, that's how we heal ourselves. It's not, it's not looking outside of ourselves. It's looking within and searching for the answers and understanding the patterns and seeing what, you know, what's coming up over and over again. But uh, I can heal myself from trauma. I have healed myself from trauma. I will continue to heal myself from trauma and you can as well. Um, uh, I learned that this whole experience of my daughter dying and whatever happened around it was, it's not personal. It wasn't happening, you know, because I was a bad person. It just wasn't about me. It had, it had nothing to do with me. It was, had to do with Kira's path. It was, um, you know, it was her time to go. I had, I had to choose to believe that in order to feel more expansive about the experience because believing that it wasn't her time to go would just really would, I don't know, that that's against reality because the reality is that it must have been her time to go because she went. So it's important that you're looking at what is reality when you're examining your thoughts and beliefs, you know, to believe that she, I shouldn't, you know, she should be here. Well, no, she shouldn't be because she's not, you know, reality is she's not here. So hanging on to the idea that she should be be here does nothing but keeps me stuck. So it's a faulty thinking pattern that needs to be addressed and transmuted into a better feeling thinking pattern. We all have the capacity to do that. Um, so, and 
I needed to embrace the fact that life is happening for me and not to me. Uh, I had, again, then that goes along with it not being personal, right? So it wasn't, this, this isn't happening to me. It's not something that I'll, I'm necessarily allowing to happen. It's just happening. It's just part, it's part of my experience. It's how my life path is playing out. I have some role in the choices I make, but the biggest role I have is in how I perceive my experiences, right? So it's, I can perceive experiences as positive or an opportunity for me to learn, or I can, I can choose to see them as things that are um, hurting me and keeping me down. That's, that's my choice. There's, there's my power, but life is happening for, for you, not to you. It's, it's happening for you to have opportunities to learn. It's happening for you to have opportunities to to see things from a new perspective. It's happening for you to be able to be open to the possibilities and your infinite potential. So along those lines, my thoughts have the power to expand or limit me. They can make or break me. We each have the power to reprogram our brain so that we think thoughts that make us feel good, that expand us, that align us with our infinite potential. We, we don't need to choose to think thoughts that limit us. So that was a big lesson for me that I have the power to choose what I think. The only thing blocking my growth are faulty thinking patterns. So anytime I feel blocked or stuck or um, just maybe foggy or just not clear, I need to dig deeper. I need to figure out what what's think what my thinking patterns are what am i thinking that's blocking me there's something that's blocking me and sometimes i have to go deeper than other times but i use the seven whys you know why 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 to keep getting deeper but there's always a faulty thinking pattern so you know if it's just that um I, you know I, I can't be my own business owner well, why? Because I don't think I'm good enough. Well, why? And, you know, because I failed at, I, I failed at college. I didn't attend college, so I'm not good enough. Why do you think that? You know, and you keep getting down to the bottom of it and you realize there's no valid evidence as to why you need to think that way. It's, it's just something that you've been programmed to think and you've chosen to hang on to that thought instead of choosing something different. So engage your power to choose a thought that expands you instead of one that limits you. Uh, look down beneath uh, all of your, your negative patterns, your challenges, your weaknesses, and look at what your faulty thinking patterns are around it. Uh, and and transmute those into thinking patterns that expand you. And then finally, I think that I was able to realize the fact that when I heal myself, others benefit from that. And it you know it can be subtle. It can it could be the animals in my house. It could be my neighbors. It could be the people that I interact with uh, on a regular basis. I'm choosing to see this experience as one that has offered me blessings. It's given me insights that I would never have had. It's allowed me knowledge that I never thought I had access to. And I feel like Kira's by my side. She's helping me with all of this knowledge and this information. She's helping me to know and remember how to heal myself. And I'm using that inspiration to share it with others. So, you know, it's my intention that people take something from my words and are able to apply it to their life and heal something that's been, um, maybe keeping them stuck for a little while. So feel free to offer me feedback or comments or let me know topics that you might want to um, hear hear me discuss or you want to provide feedback on what you've heard so far or share your story. I, I welcome you to do that. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of Modern Life Keeping brought to you by Kira Kisses. It's your responsibility to place value on the experiences you have in life. Will you have valuable experiences that expand you or will you have experiences that limit you? It's up to you to decide. Until next time, keep wondering. <laughs>